the bit that got damaged is some of the winglets that sit on the rear upright, so the carbon work there um, is quite intricate aerodynamic parts that um, generate an awful lot of the performance on the car, actually. It's a very sensitive area. Did the change in compounds affect the setup of the car? The reality is it doesn't make a big difference because we've got to get the car working across a range of them. You've got to use at least two of them in the race. Um, the bigger factor is that they do change the degradation. However, in the second week, we had much cooler track temperatures. So for the race, it was, a, it was in the low 30s. The week before, we'd seen it in the 50s. So despite going one step softer, that cooler track actually meant that you could still do the one-stop strategy um, and actually, if anything, the degradation was a little bit lower in the second week. In the early stages of the race, Valtteri did mention he was driving to Plan A. Um, and we briefed them on these on the morning, but basically Plan A was a one-stop, Plan B would have been a two-stop. Um, we don't have that the same every time because it's a bit obvious uh, for our competition to see what we're doing. But Valtteri came on just to confirm uh, the way he was driving. He was thinking of uh, driving to the one stop. He had to increase the amount of management. And he just dropped back to get a bit of free air because it actually gives the car more downforce. It looks after the tyres a bit more easily. Um, and he was just keeping us up to date with that change. Why did Lewis struggle so much to overtake Lando? Well, fundamentally, it's because Lando was quite quick and we didn't have a very big performance advantage. Uh, also, you've got to sit very close. You're around one second behind. Uh, you've got less downforce. The car's sliding around and the tyres get hotter and you lose grip. Um, so it took Lewis most of that stint. Once he did get by, you saw that he was able to pull a bit of a gap. Um, he also commented about how Lando was driving so well. What he meant there was simply that Lando wasn't making any mistakes because uh, when they're behind another driver, what they're really looking for is that driver to lock a wheel or get a snap of oversteer or an exit that just holds them back enough that they can actually make the move. Um, but unfortunately for, for Lewis, through that stint, Lando drove pretty much perfectly. How much did the damage to Lewis's car affect performance? Well, the answer is a lot. The bit that got damaged is some of the winglets that sit on the rear upright, so the carbon work there um, is quite intricate aerodynamic parts that um, generate an awful lot of the performance on the car actually. It's a very sensitive area and we are measuring the pressures in those areas and from that we can calculate the performance. Now the estimates that were coming in were around 30 to 40 points of downforce. That translates to around six or seven tenths of a second per lap. So quite a, quite a substantial amount but even worse here it all came off the rear axle. So Lewis had a lot of oversteer on that stint um, the back end of the car is sliding around, it's heating the tyres and wearing the tyres and that problem starts to compound itself with higher rate of degradation. So ultimately it cost Lewis the P2 position. It also meant that we decided to stop for another set of tyres just to make sure he could get to the end. Why did we wait a couple of laps before allowing Valtteri to race against Lewis? Well. Initially, once we diagnosed the performance problem on Lewis's car, we were just seeing where his lap times actually stabilised. But it came clear pretty early on that he was going to find it impossible to defend against Lando Norris behind. Um, we were worried that Valtteri in the middle of that battle was going to ultimately be vulnerable. But what we were waiting for was just for Lando to actually get close enough where he was a risk to Valtteri um, and that was what triggered our decision to invert the order. So you saw Lewis let Valtteri go by um, and then ultimately Lando was able to overtake Lewis. But as I said, once we'd understood the extent of the damage, we concluded pretty early on that hanging on to that third place was going to be effectively impossible. Why did we pit Lewis onto the hard tyre, not the medium? Well, during the qualifying session, the set of mediums that we, that we would have fitted in the race got a cut. And this is just where a stone or a curve is able to cut through the tyre rubber. Um, and Pirelli had a look at this and they said it was OK to do laps to the grid, but it wasn't going to be OK uh, to fit for a race stint. So unfortunately, 
that set of tyres wasn't available, um, therefore we defaulted to the hard tyre. How are we feeling after this triple header? Um, there's no doubt that the triple headers are tough. I mean, they're very relentless, um, and the mechanics and the engineers are working right through uh, that entire stint of races without a day off. So it is very, very busy. Um, also, this was quite a challenging one for us. The car hadn't been working particularly well um, at Austria. So it had been very difficult trying to get um, the balance right, and the engineers and the drivers were having to, to work very hard on that. Um, it's nice to get to the end of it. Uh, we are looking forward to Silverstone. We've got a, a good update coming there that's quite exciting. Um, we're looking forward to um, the home crowd. There's obviously a lot of Lewis fans that are going to be there. And it's also a track where our car has, has worked well. So we've got a few days just to uh, regroup, uh, to analyse the results of those, um, turn around the cars and get them ready uh, for the next race in that updated bodywork. Um, but we are optimistic for a better weekend. Will Silverstone suit the car better? Well, it's fair to say that Austria is a track that over the years we've struggled at. It's a, it's a difficult circuit and one that doesn't seem to suit our car, and we're trying to understand those issues. Uh, Silverstone, on the contrary, though, is one that we've tended to go very well at, um, and also Lewis really enjoys that circuit. Some of it is the layout and the high-speed nature, but also the fantastic support he has there from the, uh, from the home crowd. So we are looking forward to it. It's still uh, going to be a challenging race weekend. We've got the sprint format to contend with, um, but hopefully we can put on a better showing and take that fight to Red Bull. Thank you very much for all your questions. We'll be back in two weeks' time after the British Grand Prix.